All right, so we're diving into something that a lot of guys deal with, but nobody seems to talk about. Enlarged prostates, or as the cool kids call it, BPE. It's really common and luckily very treatable. Totally. But figuring out which treatment option is right for you, well, that can feel like navigating a maze blindfolded. That's where this deep dive comes in. We're dissecting this patient decision aid leaflet you sent us, trying to make this whole BPE thing way less mysterious. Exactly. Think of it as your BBE decoder ring. I like that. And it's all about empowering you to have those informed conversations with your doctor so you can make the choices that are right for you, not just what someone else thinks is best. Music to my ears. Okay, before we get into the weeds of treatments and whatnot, let's start with the star of the show, mm. the prostate itself. What is this thing? Where does it hang out? What does it actually do? So picture this, a small gland, kind of shaped like a walnut, nestled in there right below the bladder. Walnut-sized, huh? Not as intimidating as I pictured. Right, but don't let the size fool you. It's got an important job. Yeah, tell us more. It's a key player in, you know, producing semen, and it also helps to control the flow of urine. Interesting. So as men get older, this little walnut has a tendency to uh, put on a few extra ounces. Exactly. Sometimes that growth is no biggie, but other times it can start to press on the urethra. That's the tube that carries urine out of the bladder. Ah, so that's where the trouble starts. Exactly. And that pressure can lead to all sorts of fun symptoms, frequent trips to the bathroom, a weaker stream, that feeling like you haven't fully emptied your bladder, <laughs> the usual suspects. And the crazy thing is, this leaflet says over 80% of men over 80 experience this. Wow, 80%. So basically, if you're a guy and you live long enough, there's a good chance you're going to get to know BPE personally. Pretty much. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, of course, that some of those symptoms are ringing a bell. What's the first move? Well, if you're feeling those symptoms, the best thing is to get yourself to your GP. Makes sense. They'll chat with you about what you've been experiencing. Probably want to do a rectal exam to get a feel for the prostate. Not the most fun part of the process, but hey, got to do what you got to do. Exactly. And they might suggest some tests like a PSA blood test or a urine sample. Mm -hmm. This helps them rule out other conditions and make sure it's actually BPE. So it's not a done deal just based on symptoms alone. Right. And they might also mention something called a cystoscopy. It sounds scarier than it is. What's a cystoscopy? It's basically a thin tube with a tiny camera on the end, and they use it to peek inside the bladder and urethra. Gives them a clearer picture of what's going on. Makes sense. So before we jump into the world of medications and procedures, which we'll definitely get to, I love that this leaflet dives into the things you can do yourself to manage those BPE symptoms, you know, the whole take control of your health thing. It's amazing how much of a difference simple lifestyle changes can make. Now, keep in mind, these changes won't actually shrink the prostate. Right, it's not a magic bullet. But they can seriously improve your quality of life, which is huge. So what are we talking about here? Give us the goods. Well, cutting back on caffeine and alcohol is a big one. Both of those can irritate the bladder and make those BPE symptoms worse. Good to know. And bladder training. It's all about retraining your bladder to hold more urine and go less frequently. Like a boot camp for your bladder. Exactly. And they've got some great tips specifically for nighttime urination, which is a lifesaver because, let's be honest, those middle-of-the-night bathroom trips are the worst. Tell me about it. I've lost count of how many times I've tripped over the dog on my way to the bathroom at 2 a.m., but I digress. Keep going. You were about to tell us about nighttime urination. Oh, right. Yes. They have this tip called double voiding. Basically, after you think you're done peeing, you wait a bit and try to go again. It sounds weird, but apparently it can really help make sure the bladder is completely empty, which means fewer nighttime interruptions. Mm -hmm. Never heard of that one before. You live and you learn. It just yeah. goes to show that... You don't always need drastic measures to start feeling better. Exactly. And the best part is, even if you do end up needing medication or considering surgery down the line, these lifestyle changes can work alongside those treatments. It's all about a multi-pronged approach. Okay, so we've talked about lifestyle changes, but what if you've tried all that and those BPE symptoms are still cramping your style? That's where medication comes in, and this leaflet does a fantastic job of breaking it all down. It really does. Yeah. It lays out the two main types of meds, alpha blockers and 5-ARIs, and explains everything in a way that even I could understand. And trust me, 
that's saying something. I hear you. They keep it clear and concise, which is so refreshing. Okay, so alpha blockers, what's the deal with those? So alpha blockers, like this tansillosin they mention, they work by relaxing the muscles in the prostate. Okay, so it's like they're taking the pressure off. Exactly. It's like easing a kink in a hose, letting the urine flow more freely. Love a good analogy. Yeah. And then we've got the 5-ARIs, like finasteride. Those work a little differently, right? Right. Instead of just relaxing the muscles, 5-ARIs actually shrink the prostate itself. Oh, wow. So it's like a two-pronged attack on BPE. But shrinking the prostate... That sounds like it might take a bit longer to, you know, work its magic. You're right. With 5-ARIs, you're usually looking at a few months to see the full effects. So it's not necessarily the best option if you need relief like yesterday. It's also about figuring out your priorities. Need fast relief? Alpha blockers could be the way to go. Got some time and want to potentially shrink that prostate? 5-ARIs might be worth discussing with your doctor. Exactly. And speaking of discussing things with your doctor, this leaflet is amazing when it comes to side effects. It doesn't just throw out a bunch of scary maybes. It gives you real numbers. Oh, you mean like percentages and stuff? Yes. Like with alpha blockers, they say dizziness only happens in something like 2 to 8 out of every 100 guys. Okay, so not super common then. See, this is what I'm talking about, giving people the information they need to make informed decisions. Right. And it's not just about the potential downsides. They also talk about effectiveness, like how many people actually see improvement after a certain amount of time. Which is huge, because let's be honest, no medication works for 100% of people, right? Exactly. So with alpha blockers, it looks like about 60% of men see improvement after four years, which is really helpful to know because you can go in with realistic expectations. Totally. And you know what else impressed me? How they tackled the whole uh, sensitive topic of potential changes in ejaculation. Ah, uh, yes. Not always the easiest conversation to have. For sure. But they don't shy away from it at all. Like they straight up say that with psilocin, which is a specific type of alpha blocker, nearly 30 out of 100 men experience some changes in ejaculation. But with tamsulosin, it's more like 1 to 8 out of 100. Having that level of detail can make a huge difference when you're trying to decide what you're comfortable with. Exactly. It's all about informed consent. Right. Knowing the potential risks and benefits so you can make the best choice for you. Now, let's say medication hasn't done the trick or maybe it's just not the right fit. The leaflet then walks us through the world of surgery. And I gotta say, they do a good job of acknowledging that this is a big decision. It can be a daunting prospect for sure, but this leaflet emphasizes that getting referred to a specialist isn't a failure, it just means you're exploring all your options. Right, it's like leveling up in the game of BPE. Uh -huh. So you're at the specialist, what happens next? Well, they're probably gonna wanna get a really clear picture of what's going on, so be prepared for some more tests, like a flow rate test to see how strong your stream is. Makes sense. They might do an ultrasound to get a visual of the prostate and bladder and maybe even that cystoscopy we talked about earlier. Got to gather all the intel. Okay, so you've had your test. Now what? This is where things get real, right? The surgery talk. Exactly. And this leaflet doesn't hold back. It lists out a whole bunch of different procedures from TERP to laser surgery to things I'd honestly never even heard of, like Eurolift. I know, right? It's a lot. So how do you even begin to wrap your head around all these options? Well, I think the key takeaway is that some of these procedures focus on actually removing prostate tissue, while others aim to just widen the urethra to improve urine flow. So it's kind of like approaching the problem from different angles. And of course, each procedure comes with its own set of potential risks and benefits, recovery times, all that jazz. But the good news is this leaflet breaks it all down. <laughs> they really do. They talk about how much your symptoms are likely to improve with each procedure, the chances you might need another procedure down the line, how long it takes to recover. It's all in there. They even give you an idea of how long you might need to take off work, which is huge. Right. Like if you're thinking about getting one of these procedures, you need to know if you're going to be out of commission for a week or a month. Absolutely. And I love that they frame it as which is right for me, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to, right? Your personal circumstances, yeah. your priorities, all that. Exactly. And this is where that open communication with your doctor is crucial. They're there to help you weigh the pros and cons, answer your questions, and make a decision that feels right for you. Now, we've been talking a lot about the practical side of things, the hows and the whats, but I think it's important to acknowledge that there's often an emotional component to this whole BPE thing, too. Absolutely. It's not just about physical symptoms. It's about how BPE affects your quality of life, your self-esteem, even your relationships. Exactly. 
And the leaflet doesn't shy away from that. They talk about the potential for things like incontinence, erectile dysfunction, changes in ejaculation. Which are all valid concerns and ones that you should definitely feel comfortable discussing with your doctor. For sure. And again, they ground it in data. Like with incontinence, they're clear that it only becomes a permanent issue for a small percentage of men after certain surgeries. It's about putting things into perspective, which I think they do a really good job of. It all comes back to those personal priorities we were talking about. What matters most to you? Are you willing to risk a longer recovery time for a lower chance of needing another procedure later? Or is preserving sexual function your top priority? Tough questions, but important ones to consider. And I think this leaflet does a great job of prompting that internal dialogue, encouraging you to really think about what you're comfortable with. Absolutely. It's about empowering you to be an active participant in your healthcare decisions. Now, there's one more thing in here that I think deserves some attention. Yeah. Catheters. Not the most glamorous topic, but definitely relevant. Yeah, catheters don't exactly get a lot of love, but they play an important role in this whole BPE conversation. They do. And I was really impressed with how the leaflet handles this topic. It explains that sometimes you need a catheter temporarily after surgery or even for a longer period if you're waiting for treatment. Uh -huh. And they do it in a way that's informative but not scary, which I appreciate. Totally. They talk about the different types of catheters, how they work, even potential issues like blockages or infections. But again, they use data to put those risks into perspective. Because knowledge is power. It's one thing to know that a risk exists, but it's another thing entirely to understand how likely or unlikely that risk is. Exactly. And that's what this leaflet does so well. It arms you with information so you can have those informed conversations with your doctor. So we've thrown a lot of information at you about BPE, everything from those first trips to the doctor to lifestyle changes, medications, even surgery. It's a lot to process. It is. And it can feel kind of overwhelming when you're sitting there in the doctor's office trying to remember all your questions. Like, your brain goes blank. In there. Totally. But fear not, dear listener, because this leaflet has got you covered. They have a whole section called Preparing for Your Next Appointment. And it's basically a cheat sheet of conversation starters. It's so good. They've thought of everything. Seriously. Like, are you worried about how BPE or the treatments might affect your sex life? Which, let's be honest, is a big one for a lot of guys. Totally. And the leaflet tackles it head on. They give you specific questions to ask your doctor, questions you might not even think to ask yourself. It's like having a wingman for those potentially awkward conversations. Exactly. And it's not just about the sensitive stuff. They cover all the bases. Right. Side effects, long-term risks, what to expect after treatment. It's all right there in black and white, ready for you to jot down and bring to your appointment. And that's the key takeaway here, right? You don't have to go into this alone. This leaflet arms you with the knowledge and the questions you need to be an active participant in your own health care. Oh, 10%. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive, there's one more thing I wanted to touch on. While reading this leaflet, it hit me that there are kind of two separate timelines to think about when it comes to BPE treatment, especially surgery. Oh, interesting. Tell me more. So the leaflet mentions that some of the improvements you feel, those happen pretty quickly, like within weeks. Okay. But then there are other improvements that can take months to fully kick in. And I realized I'd never really thought about it that way before. It's true. We tend to think of surgery as this immediate fix. Exactly. But that's not always a reality, especially with BPE. So knowing that there are these two different timelines, the short-term recovery and then the long-term results, I think that could be really helpful for managing expectations. Totally. It's all about setting realistic goals and being prepared for that gradual improvement over time. Couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note of newfound knowledge and a healthy dose of reality, I think it's time to wrap up this episode. It's been a pleasure diving into the ins and outs of BPE with you. Likewise. And to our amazing listeners, thank you for coming along for the ride. We hope you learned a thing or two about those pesky prostates and, more importantly, that you feel empowered to take control of your health. Remember, knowledge is power, so keep asking questions, keep advocating for yourself, and never be afraid to have those open and honest conversations with your healthcare team. Until next time, happy diving.